Kingdom citizens, welcome, welcome, welcome again to another life-changing broadcast on Power for Life. And we mean power for your life. It is important that we understand as believers to do what we have to do in God and to obey the will of God and to walk out the will of God for our lives, we must have power in order to do that. We have to have power to walk out the will and God has a plan to make sure we had power. I am so glad to have you on our broadcast once again. Uh, I am your host, Bishop Cookhouse. We are always trying to get something to you, not take something from you. And it's just a blessing. So we split this particular lesson up because oftentimes with TV ministry, you can't give everybody everything because of time constraints. That's why we want you to make sure you go going and get the product because even though you're hearing the great word on this television broadcast, there is still more left in the tank on each individual sermon. So remember that when you get the instructions about ordering the CD, you won't just get the information that you see on the screen, you will also get the entire live service, the live preaching element of the service. And that's critical because as believers, we survive and live off the word of God, preached, read, and understood. And so, wanna be a blessing to you. We split this, this, this first one up to give you more uh, than you bargained for. Uh, we split it up, so we're gonna rewind a little bit back into last week and then we're gonna continue forward to close out this particular sermon on saturation. Now it's, it's important for a believer to know how to go get wet, how to go get soaked, how to go get in the presence and the different, the different nuances of God's presence and faith that we're supposed to work that make sure we got power to walk out and walk through any situation, amen, that the enemy throws at us or that life throws at us or just being developed as a believer. You need power to walk it out and saturation is the key. So come with me into this life-changing service. I promise you, don't change the channel. Call somebody, tell somebody about this program, and we're gonna get them blessed. Listen, get ready for a life-changing work. Come on with me right now in the service, and I promise we're gonna meet you at the point of your need. Well, it's time to start submerging yourself. It's time to start getting saturated. Now, the, the principle of submerging is baptism. The Bible calls it baptismo, or the doctrine of baptisms. I want you to understand something. People that don't really understand baptism, they push this water thing, and I'm not mad at the water thing. We just got a $60,000 baptismal pool sitting over here, heated tub and everything, and we just got to replace a couple little things on it, and we're going to have our own baptism. I'm not anti-baptism. It's important for a believer to have it in their life. But this is why it's important for you as a believer, amen, to understand that water baptism. Because when you experience water baptism, I said, God, why is this so significant? And whenever I ask God, God always answers me. So I ask God one day, I said, why is this so significant that we experience the water baptism when it's really just symbolic? He said, God told me, he said, it's the only way I can show you what the Holy Ghost looks like when it happens in the inside. He said, so when you go down in the water, he said, nothing on you is not wet. He said, and he said, you're wet between your toes. You're wet between your butt. You're wet down to your scalp. You're wet underneath your fingernails. You're wet, your skin is absorbing the water. You're wet under your arms. You're wet all over your body. He said, that's what I want the believer to understand about the nature of being baptized with fire. He said, I want the fire underneath your nails. I want the fire underneath your arms. I want the fire in between your toes. That's why Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my boat. I need somebody to hear me. God said, son, the water baptism is the only way I can show you how the Holy Ghost wants to cover everything. 
He wants you to be submerged in everything. And I was like, man, that's amazing. I said, man, that's amazing. That's why it's so important that we understand how powerful that is. So here are the benefits to kingdom saturation. The benefits of kingdom saturation, if you're wondering, well, why should I be saturated? The benefit of kingdom saturation, the number one benefit is faith. <laughs> amen. The Bible says, above all, taking the shield of faith. The next thing, amen, uh, saturation produces is peace. The next thing saturation produces uh, is joy. <laughs> the next thing saturation produces, amen, is hearing accurately. The body of Christ struggles with hearing God uh, accurately. And every believer is supposed to hear God accurately. The next benefit, amen, is power. And then the next benefit is consistently seeing the supernatural manifest in your life. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to consistently see the supernatural manifest in my life. It separates me from the ordinary people. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? If you're wondering why I said, man, Bishop, it's like this miracle just happened for Bishop. How come them things ain't happening for me? It's what you're being submerged in. It's what you're saturated with. I know how to go saturate myself uh, when I ain't feeling the best uh, or when I'm feeling discouraged. Uh, I know that's time for saturation. Uh, you're so busy wondering what, need, uh, what do I need to do? Uh, but see, I'm trying to teach you something right now because you keep going to these other sources to get your saturation. Listen, all the sex in the world ain't going to fix it. All the drugs in the world ain't going to fix it. I don't care what the therapist tells you, it ain't going to fix it. The therapist don't have the keys to the kingdom unless he's a spiritual therapist, unless he can tell you, you ain't been in your word. Where's your accountability? Who are you talking to? What kind of people do you have in your bedchamber? Are your hands clean? Do you give? Do you tithe? What's going on in your life? That's why when you come talk to Bishop, I'm going to talk about how you living. Because how you living really talks about how you're saturated. Come on, somebody say how I'm saturated. Elijah, when he was facing the prophets of Baal in Kings 18, 30 through uh, 39, it says the king, the, the prophets of Baal were cutting themselves. Because remember, they got together and they had a wager and they said, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And so they had a wager, they had a bet. And Elijah went out and gathered up all the folks, all the disobedient Israelites who were struggling serving false gods. And he said, I'm gonna show you something that you need to see. So the, he said he gave the prophets of Baal, amen, the prophets of Baal worship what they call a phallic idol or a phallic symbol. It was really an erected penis. I'm just telling you what it is. It was a fertility god that they worship. So can you imagine these folks that call themselves spiritual and they standing around worshiping this great big huge boner? That's what it was. It was a demonic force. It was a demonic, perverted idol. And they're all standing around worshiping a phallic symbol and their God would not show up. And so they begin to cut themselves with lances and knives. And the Bible says that the blood started gushing out. And Elijah was there saying, what's going on? Where's your God at? Is he on a journey? Is he in a faraway place? Maybe he's asleep. And then Elijah gathered them folks around and Elijah took his bullock and he separated it and then he grabbed 12 stones uh, and then he dug a trench around the altar and then he grabbed 12 
buckets of water, and then another 12 buckets of water, and then another 12 buckets of water. But everything he did after he shed the blood and he and, and he put stuff together, it was about covenant symbols and covenant rights. It was about covenant symbols and covenant rights. That's why God showed up supernatural for him because he was not trying to take the glory from God. He was showing that these were 12 things uh, that God honored and had covenant with. Uh, the 12 stones represented the 12 tribes of Judah. Uh, it represented God's people. Uh, it represented the 12 sons. Uh, the 12 buckets represented that 12. Uh, the water represented something that was critical uh, to a Judas under to a, a Jewish understanding talking about water and what water does. Uh, water is something that is used to submerge them as believers to be clean before they went into the temple. And so he wanted his offering to be clean. And he had the blood there. He had the blood from the bullock. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of any man's sins. So Jesus was the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. And if you even look at the sacrifice of Jesus, when they put the spear in his side, he released water and he released blood. That's how they knew the sacrifice was complete. They knew he was gone because they pierced his side and water and blood came out of it. And so here in the Old Testament, we see water and blood being a part of the covenant because he was asking God to come down from heaven and burn this sacrifice up and answer by fire. So in your demonstration of power, does covenant go before you? In your demonstration when you give an offering, does covenant go before you? Because another thing that you must understand is the most significant thing he poured on the altar was the water. Now water in that time was very, very precious because there was a famine in the land because of drought. So even the animals weren't surviving because there was a drought and they needed water to keep the animals alive. So he went and got the first 12 buckets. Then he went and got another 12 buckets. Then he went and got another 12 buckets. What an offering. Can you imagine the thing being precious, so precious in that time to where he had to go get those buckets and he went and got water from a very, uh, very estranged and a very rare place. He probably had to have, he probably had dibs on a well somewhere, but it was drought in the land and the beasts were dying and people were dying because there was no water. But he went and got 12 buckets and he poured it over. He said, now go do it again. And they went and got another 12 buckets. Somebody say precious seed. People want to tell you not to give. They want to tell you not to offer. But God is looking at what kind of dis dispensation or what kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, what is that word that somebody taught me the other? It would taught me this word. What is a demonstration? <laughs> he was talking about some females and some foolishness. Hey, man, he talking about he, he, his, this little demonstration. <laughs> I didn't know a woman could be called a demonstration. But in your demonstration, what, the, what represents you? In your demonstration in the earth, what represents you? So he had in his demonstration, uh, he had to go get all this water. He went and got all this water. Oh, how, many, how many buckets of water is that? Is that 36 buckets? That's 36 buckets of water, but all tied to the 12. But the water was precious. It was so precious to God. God looked at it as a precious thing. And then when he called on God, the Bible says the fire came down from heaven. The fire burnt up the, the bullock. The fire sucked up all the blood. The fire burnt up all the wood. When is the last time you seen fire burn rocks? I mean, not turn them into lava, but turn the rocks into dust. It sucked up all the rocks. It sucked up all the water. I thought we use water to put out fires, but all that 
that water was something that God needed to anoint his demonstration. So I'm challenging every believer in this house. If you want the right kind of demonstration, you must have the right type of saturation. If you've enjoyed this word today, then you need to get this message in its entirety. To receive the link to select your desired message or series, please send your info to wordlife at chfgm.org and type wordlife in the subject bar. Thank you so much for your continued support. Real hope, real life, real message. You got to have the right kind of saturation. So here we find Jesus in John 4, 9, 14. Jesus is coming to the well because he's thirsty. And when he gets to the well, he finds a Sumerian woman there getting water from the well. And he says, get me some water so that I can drink. And she thinks to herself, he knows that the Jews have no dealings with the Sumerians. He wouldn't be asking me for a drink of water. I want somebody to hear me today. Now Jesus went on and told her, if, he under, if she understood what manner of man that was asking her, that I would give her living water. I would give her water where she had not had to thirst. Now this is significant because a woman who had five husbands was considered a filthy woman. She was considered a woman that had no standard. She had been with five five men, not necessarily her husbands, but the Bible says that this one that she was with now is not her husband. What God was telling her is that I can give you living water. Now, in the in, in Jewish customs and Jewish understanding, amen, uh, living water was a source. It was the pure source of water. It was a water from a natural source or a natural spring. And those natural Natural sources and springs uh, had different types of powers in it uh, to purge women that were unclean. Uh, and so after a woman would experience her menstrual cycle, uh, after on the last time she would go to the temple uh, before she would go in to pray uh, and she would dip in this pool of living water. Now Jesus was telling this woman uh, I'm going to put something inside of you uh, so that your bellies would flow with living water uh, so that she would never thirst again. He was trying to enter, introduce her to an environment uh, where she could be submerged uh, and saturated, uh, where anything she was believing God for uh, would come to pass. Uh, now, saints of God, this morning, uh, let me stir you up uh, and ask you what type of submersion, uh, what type of submersion, uh, what type of saturation uh, are you dealing with this morning because there need to be some kingdom saturation. There need to be some kingdom power released in your life because God said, I don't want you to thirst. Now, what does that mean when he said, I don't want you to thirst? He said, I don't want you to go through in your finances. I don't want you to go through in relationships. I don't want you to go through in business. Amen. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that you're not going to have a trial. I'm saying that, listen, anytime you get a trial, every time I win, that trial I wasn't that bad. <laughs> And this is what God wants you to experience. He wants you to experience trial conquering. But you know, every time you go through something, it's a trial. Sometimes you're going through some things that are tribulations. But God wants you to have this living water source. He was talking about an original source. Something where she wouldn't have to go anywhere to get it. That this thing would be inside of her. That this thing would flow out of her. It will flow out of her mouth in anything that she touched. Uh, now, he was not talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, he was talking about her position in faith, uh, saying that God 
is your source. And when you are saturated, when you understand real saturation, you understand that God is your source. And that means when I go through, God is my source. When I'm going through this, God is my source. When I'm going through that, God is my source. If I'm lacking finances, God is my source. If I'm lonely, God is my source. If I'm angry, God is my source. If I'm confused, God is my source. If my marriage is in trouble, God is my source. If I'm confused, God is my source. They called that pool with that natural spring a mitzvah. It is a, a name, that's the Hebrew name for this type of pool. It was a spring of natural flowing water, which means it sprung forth from the earth. So I want you to hear something. God wants to be your natural spring of flowing supply coming from deep down inside of you. So anywhere you might have lack in your life, this morning, go get wet. Go find the pool. Go get wet. Go get saturated. Go find the living water. Go find this living water. Go find the source. I don't care what you're going through today. Go find the source. Look at your neighbor and say, get wet, get wet, get wet. Come on, get wet, get wet, find somebody, say, get wet. Get wet, get wet, get wet, get wet. Come on, find somebody else, say, get wet. If you got a problem, get wet. If you're in a situation, get wet. Come on, look at somebody, say, get wet. Because God is looking to get your situation wet. God is looking. Come on, somebody. Can nobody want no dry place? He, he said, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. Upon the dry ground, I will flood the dry ground. When the devil comes in like a standard, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against that type of flood. Somebody say, get wet. God is looking to show up in your situation. And ain't nothing you going through gonna be too hard for God. I'm telling you, when you submerge, you're gonna produce faith. When you're saturated, you're gonna produce faith. When you're saturated, you're gonna produce peace. When you're saturated, you're gonna produce joy. When you're saturated, you're gonna produce, amen, hearing accuracy. When you're saturated, you're gonna have power. When you're saturated, you're gonna consistently see God show up in your life, manifest time after time, after time, after time, from faith to faith to faith to faith. Real believers, don't be discouraged. It's your time of saturation. Real believers, real believers, real believers, stay saturated and I'm out of time. Woo, I told you, devil don't want no smoke. He don't want to mess with real believers, man. I'm trying to tell you, anybody with power, anybody understands the keys of being saturated, of, of being immersed in God's presence and working that particular type of faith and spiritual system, you will always see tremendous kingdom results in your life. And so we're so glad you had a chance to watch this program. Now, it's critical 
Listen, if you want to sow into this powerful ministry, please, there's information right there on the screen for you to click on. Download us on GiveLify. Please, we welcome your support. It helps us to be on air, helps us continue. And we're looking to expand our TV ministry because we know we have a unique brand of ministry. Amen, God has called us uh, to penetrate the airwaves all over the globe. And so we thank all of our partners and friends that are already doing so and helping us and being a blessing to us. And we know we're being a blessing to you. So I just want to just take time also to say uh, what's up to all the pastors and folks out there that are part of my ministry that are abroad. And we're just so glad you're tuning in and that you're checking out the program with us. But please remember, download us on GiveLify or use our Cash App handle to sow into this great life-changing ministry. Amen. You will see a return on your seed sown. Uh, also, if you also are out there and you say, well, man of God, I, I, I don't have nothing to sow, but I need prayer, uh, or you do want to sow and you need prayer, it doesn't make a difference to us. Whatever way we can connect with you, we want to connect. So if you are out there and you need, a, you need to get a prayer through, there's something you believe in God for, or if this ministry just changed your life and has touched your life, please write us. The address is on the screen. Email us, shoot us an email in our inbox. We would love to check it and see what's going on in your life. Remember, this is all about kingdom development as a Christian ministry. We want to develop your life in Christ Jesus and see God continue to move on a supernatural level where you're seeing supernatural breakthroughs in your life. Really quickly, I just wanna share with you, coming soon in September, it'll be right on top of us, man. We have our Dominion Conference. Uh, we normally have our men's conference sometime in the beginning of the year and our women's conference sometime at the end of the year. But this year, we are combining our men's and women's conference together. Uh, my wife is the keynote speaker of the women's conference, amen, the awesome Dr. Sharon Cook and Bishop, uh, myself, I'll be the keynote speaker at the men's conference. Listen, life-changing, powerful conference for men and women. Get ready. If you're coming to our city, amen, make your preparations. We want to see you here in Minneapolis. We're going to have a life-changing word for the men. Bring your men's group. Bring anybody that wants to be affected by the gospel of Jesus Christ because we're going to bring it hard. The theme of our conference is We Rise. Amen. We Rise. And so I know God's going to speak to every believer, every man and every woman uh, that's going to be a part of this conference. So we want you to come out, fly into our city. Amen. We have amazing accommodations all over the city and we want to see you here inside the Lions Den and Real Believers Faith Center. It's going to be turned up. It's going to be fire. It's going to be lit. And I'm telling you, God is going to do something incredible in your life. Uh, we have a tremendous men's and women's ministry here. It is our staple. It is our, it is our focal point in ministry. And God has blessed us to be able to speak in those arenas. And I know that's truly my assignment, amen, to speak into men's lives, just like it's my wife's assignment to speak into ladies' lives. And so listen, man, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to, you don't want to miss this conference and we're putting it out here and we're going to continue to talk about it because you got to get here and see what the Lord is doing. I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. So this is Bishop Cookhouse. Check us out again next week. I promise we're going to get something awesome to you and you're going to see how God is going to continue to saturate you and saturate your mind and give you the tools and the abilities so you can walk this thing out on a high level. Remember, I'll see you next week and take your dominion.